If you're wondering what diodes are, why they're used, and why they're important to be used in most applications, this short video should be pretty informative and educational. I'm not going to read this to you because that will be really boring, but I want to show you some information, some basic stuff, and I know I've touched on diodes before because I sell a lot of them people. A lot of my customers use them. I mean, it's just a thing you got to have. So essentially, you have diodes, which we use, which are 1 amp, 3 amp, 5, 6, 10 amps. That's the biggest I've ever used beyond that. I mean, it's almost like a dead short. Uh, it doesn't even really make sense to use a diode larger than 10 amps. Um, that would be one hot diode, I would think. Basically, what it is, is you have the cathode side, which allows the ground and negative energy to pass in this direction. Then you have an anode, which allows positive energy to pass on this side. And positive cannot go through the cathode. Negative energy cannot pass through the anode. That's what it is. So it blocks positive or negative energy, depending on if you flip this thing around one way or the other. So over here is a simple circuit, which a positive energy is coming in on the back end of the anode side of the diode, of course, eliminating the bulb, and then it's going to the ground path, and then there you go. There's a circuit. Flip it around backwards, you have positive coming in, blocks the current, no bulb. Not going to work. So you can see what's going on. The diode is doing its job. Moving along down here, you got some, some stuff happening. You have a switch, you have an alarm, you have one and two bulbs. So this one here, your ground is going to pass in this direction, no problem. So if you have a switch open, for instance, positive energy resting on this side of, of the filament and you had a negative energy, it would turn on this bulb, but it would not go back the other way because it only works the way the diode will, will allow it. So cathode can't go positive energy, but, but can go for negative energy. So in this scenario, you can use a diode and you can use multiple components and use the diodes to your advantage. This is pretty advanced, um, especially when you're doing multiple switching, lighting systems, stuff like that. Um, you can get really creative with all these kinds of things. But this here is a simple explanation of this type of flow. You see you got positive energy coming in bulb goes in the anode, no problem. Light bulb, back, back to ground, no problem. That's the way it's supposed to work. Now over here, same scenario, switches on, not happening, diode is doing its job, it's blocking. That's what the diodes are there for. So for instance, if you had, um, a simple one I like to use is if you have a hood open and you have a trunk open and you had no diodes and you had them connected to the alarm, say you open up the hood, it's turning on the trunk light. That's not good. So you should, you should have two diodes with the banded sides connected to either one so that they both go to the alarm but don't go feeding back to one another. That's why diodes are so important. Here's another one for you where you can have um, some diodes connected to a door lock system and also triggering the factory arm or disarm wires in a vehicle, which you could use what's called a, di a double diode configuration such as this here. This is a very popular a scenario for especially for car alarm installers a must-have type of deal you have to know how to use these diodes for these scenarios and again like I was talking about if you had um, a right door and a left door and you don't want this door feeding to that one or this one to the other because it's in between a gem module or BCM or something like that you don't want to wig out the computers you could double diode isolate it and you could do something like this and have it shared to a common input on the alarm going in this direction only but not feeding back to the pin switches to the light circuits. Again, these are larger diodes. You can see how big and fat they are. That's what they look like, big and fat. These are the skinny one amps or three amps. And that's basically isolating the outputs to the, to the wires because you're gonna have power flowing in this direction across the cathodes to the lights, but not feeding back to one another. That's the purpose of using these diodes. This would be very valuable in like a BMW or a Volkswagen's, Audi's, stuff like that, they use that. This is really good, like I was talking about, if you're connecting a hood to a, a trunk wire, which in, in a hood doesn't have a light, but a trunk does, but if you open up the hood, which is not gonna draw any current, it's feeding back to the other circuit, turning on the light, so you could actually have your hood open all night, saying, what? Well, I have nothing to worry about because there's no light on, but it's feeding back to the trunk light. You, in the morning, you have a dead battery, had you not used the diode correctly. Here's some more scenarios where diodes come in handy. Star kill relays. Um, here's that trunk and hood pin. Actually, they're using the same scenario that I I've, I find to be quite a tricky one. 
So diodes are really cool. Gotta love diodes. So good to have some in your toolbox. Um, I typically always have one amps, three amps, five amps, always around because you never know when you're gonna need them. And when you do need them, let me tell you, nothing will replace them.